When I was in college, I thought I wanted to be a medical doctor. I didn't love biology, so that wasn't going to be a problem. Uh, but I was enamored with uh, chemistry through my first chemistry professor, and that's when I got interested in pursuing a chemistry degree. And my first research position was uh, in a group doing polymer science. But I would have to say that my three mentors, my undergraduate uh, mentor, my PhD mentor, and my postdoctoral mentor are really uh, people that I uh, very much look up to. My research group focuses on polymer science problems and we enter most of those problems through uh, kind of a polymer synthesis portal. Everything we do uh, revolves around making and designing new molecules to either so solve some applied problem or actually look at the fundamentals of a polymer science uh, problem that we're trying to understand. One of the most interesting things happening in polymer science is really the advent of so many types of controlled polymerization. And all of these, um, I would say, enhanced controlled methods have opened up new vistas, not only in applied polymer science, but also in answering fundamental questions in polymer physics. And so the connection between theory and experiment is getting stronger and stronger, and being able to test theories with these controlled uh, polymerization uh, products, and also being to push theories uh, into new realms that are not um, uh, met right now are certainly some, I think, exciting vistas for the area of polymer science. The most important thing about ACS journals is that the editors-in-chief and the associate editors are all practicing scientists. Uh, most are working in there with research groups that are um, actively doing the chemistry that is the topic of their particular journal. So in the case of macromolecules, um, I have a research group and I work in polymer science and I like when my students submit their papers to macromolecules. And so I feel uh, like I have a good sense of the types of things that would go into macromolecules, a good sense of where um, the sticking points are in a particular research area, and working, you know, as I said, uh, uh, down, in the, down in the trenches of uh, a practicing scientist. So I have been associate editor for Macromolecules for the past 10 years. Um, now my role is a little bit different. I'm still handling papers as editor-in-chief, uh, but now there's a larger kind of overarching role at the journal. Something that um, every day I'm, I'm, I'm assigning papers to associate editors. Um, I'm, I'm handling papers myself at Macromolecules, uh, in particular ones that are closely related to my field. I'm um, handling concerns from reviewers uh, and, and authors. Uh, I'm uh, working with the American Chemical Society on ways to promote the journal and to promote polymer science in general within the kind of landscape of the, of, of the ACS. And I think that um, interfacing with the editorial advisory board and the associate editors is maybe not a daily uh, task, but something certainly that we are, are doing uh, periodically to kind of um, make sure and we're gauging how things are going in the author experience, the reader experience, and the reviewer experience of macromolecules. So my plans for the journal are to maintain its reputation as the top journal in polymer science. Um, I think that we have an opportunity to expand our global uh, reach. I think we have an opportunity to reach out to younger investigators uh, in polymer science. And I think that there's um, um, a real drive from my part to maintain the integrity of the journal, maintain the high standards of the journal, and uh, do all the services that we have for authors at Macromolecules that are working and try to improve on ones that maybe need improvement. Just starting out, um, when I look back on uh, important things I think for younger polymer scientists is really focusing on the fundamentals and really building your foundation in polymer science. Making sure that that foundation is uh, strong and broad. Uh, you will uh, be building on that foundation through your entire career. Uh, that'll happen at the undergraduate level with your classwork and then it happens with your PhD. So you'll be working on something that maybe 
potentially rather narrow, but I think building deeply in that field and understanding the, the techniques that you're using, uh, understanding the synthesis of the molecules that you're using, understand how they're actually utilized in application as deeply as possible will really help you build, uh, I think, for future endeavors in polymer science. And what happens as you move on in your career, you have less and less time uh, to rebuild those foundations, and so you're relying on that uh, throughout your career. So, so do spend that time um, making sure that your polymer science, uh, your foundational understanding of polymer science is strong.